Hi, my name is Kimberly, and this is my first YouTube video. So a little bit about me. I live in a two bedroom house in the Bay Area outside of San Francisco, and I lived here for almost exactly a year now. And over the course of the last year, I've been working my way room by room and kind of all of the rooms at once and making over the spaces. So when I moved in, this house was painted like every color. And contrary to the shirt I'm wearing today, I am, I was gonna say a neutral but I don't know if I should say 30 seconds into this video. I am a lover of neutrals, so that had to go. And I have slowly been working through room by room, repainting, redecorating, so it has been a process. My budget is small. I do a lot of thrifting and a lot of DIY projects. That's another reason why it's taken me a year to do this room makeover, because almost every single piece in this room is secondhand or thrifted or it was a DIY project. But I thought that maybe that could be inspiring to some because I know it is intimidating when you have a really small budget and a house to furnish. And especially if you're into home decor and you're into interior design, it does feel a little disheartening to have such a small budget. But it's been a lot of fun and now that the room is done, it feels really cozy to me and it feels really special because almost everything in the room has a personal touch. So anyways, that's enough about me. Let's just get into it. Here is my bedroom makeover. Okay, so this is where we're starting with the room. And actually, to be honest, we're not starting. We've already painted once. So when we first moved in, the walls were a limey, pale green color. And then the trim up there was painted dark purple. So obviously that was the first thing that had to go. And I really wish I would have taken videos when we first moved in just so you could actually see the full transformation from where the room started. But we moved in here in such a rush that I didn't even think about it. I think I have one picture of the pink color and I'll insert that here if I do. So the problem with the first round of paint is that I was going for something that wasn't stark white, something that had a little bit of warmth to it. And um, this is what I got. I think it's a little bit hard to tell on camera, but this has a weird yellow green undertone. So now I'm swatching Benjamin Moore white paints. So this is simply white, Chantilly lace, and alabaster. And unless I have a drastic change of heart between now and when we paint, which is highly possible, I think I'm gonna go with Chantilly lace. Okay, so I had already started putting the brackets up to hang up my curtains in here before we had to <clears throat> repaint everything. So those are already hung up, but I am using this little trick that I learned from Lizbeth Sanson here on YouTube, where she made kind of a DIY track system by using these really cheap curtain rods from Walmart or Target, and then you just overlap the curtains to give kind of a seamless look. And I'm using the Ritva curtains from Ikea, which are 100% cotton and have kind of a linen look to them, but for a much more affordable price. So overall, this whole wall cost me just about $100. So this is going to be my first DIY for this room. I got these lamps off of Facebook Marketplace for $10 each. So I'm just going to paint these and do a little mud trick that, you know, everybody knows the mud trick, but we love her for a reason. So let's get started. So first I just spray painted both of the lamp bases matte black. And I didn't do a super thorough job because I was okay with some of the color coming through since it's supposed to look a little bit worn. And then I just mixed up some mud with some dirt and water the way you would make mud. And honestly, I think this is potting soil. It was just whatever I had. And I just covered the whole lamp bases 
in that mixture and then let it dry. Once it was dry, I just took a rag and wiped off all of the extra. If there was any spots that I wanted to make a little bit darker again, I kind of touched them up with the black spray paint and honestly, that was it. You've seen like 800 people do this DIY by now, but there you go. So we're gonna keep going with this whole painting lamps black situation and I'm gonna move on to the next lamp that I thrifted. I just thrifted this at Salvation Army for about $10 and I'm just mixing some black paint with some baking soda to give it that ceramic kind of pottery texture and I'm just painting the lamp and honestly this feels weird to paint a lamp and paint the lampshade and everything. I really wasn't sure if it was going to work but I just knew I loved the shape of the lamp. I just wasn't a fan of the color but it actually turned out really well. You just have to do a few coats so that you don't see the brush strokes on the lampshade when you turn the light on. Okay, so I went through a bunch of ideas of what I wanted the main artwork to look like on the wall. I really wanted something simple and don't want too much going on. So I started with this canvas that I made in 2020 when we were all just, you know, sitting around spackling everything in sight. And I'm very much over the spackle look. And I did a project in my living room where I used some fabric to cover canvases and I had a little piece left. So I just decided to use that scrap of fabric to make something interesting and textural on the canvas. So I kind of just played around with it and used wallpaper paste to apply it until it was situated on the canvas how I liked it. The day is finally here to get rid of the boob light. And like, I don't wanna be dramatic, but I feel like my whole life has been leading up to this day. So I'm super excited and just slightly terrified that I'm gonna like kill myself or like set the house on fire. Okay, so I'm gonna cut myself off here because first of all, what am I even saying? And second, honestly, nothing I say for the next like five minutes makes any sense and it's not what I ended up doing anyways. So basically the electrical is very shoddy in this house because it's the original wiring from the 30s. So when I tried to change a fixture in one of the other rooms, it was really just chaotic up there. And also the ceilings are lath and plaster, so it started crumbling as I was trying to attach a new fixture. And oh my God, <laughs> look at me trying to explain this. Clearly I had no idea what I was doing. So basically I wanna keep the base from the boob light on the ceiling and I just want to swap out the actual boob part. So my idea was to attach this paper lantern to the base of the boob light on the ceiling. And honestly, what I'm about to say right here is the only correct thing I said in that whole spiel. I don't really know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do it right now. <laughs> <clears throat> I like still have no idea what I'm doing and I'm climbing the ladder to do it. <laughs> so we're just gonna see what happens. <sighs> we're not off to a good start. This is not I'm not really starting strong here. How about this angle? Alright, so the plan right now is to keep this here question mark and somehow I'm like wearing the longest trip hazardiest pants ever. <laughs> Alright we're done. <laughs> okay so that took way too long to do something so small. But I'm pretty sure it works, so let's see. There she is. And it actually was so much simpler than I'm sure I made it look. The little metal bar that goes in the lantern to expand it can actually just hook on over the light bulbs. So I feel like this is actually a really good, easy rental hack. 
All right, so we're gonna pretend like this is like the next day when really this is several months later. So when you are decorating or furnishing a house on a budget and with a full-time job that you also commute to, it is a process. And I mean, I've always known that, but I feel like this room is the epitome of that because it is very small and requires about four pieces of furniture and I've been working on it for like 10 months. That being said, can we just take a moment? This dresser is like, honestly, the thing that makes this whole room like even cool. Like I'm literally in like a 14 by 14, is it even that big? A 12 by 12, I don't know, very small shoebox room that is just like painted white with some curtains. Like the only part that makes this room cool is this dresser. So this was actually a Facebook marketplace find. And the best part of all of this is this is a vintage 1970s artifacts by Henredon dresser that I got on Facebook marketplace for $50. You can find it on, I've seen listings on first dibs, cherish eBay, anywhere from like, if it's not in great condition, anywhere from like 1500 up to $3,000 for this dresser. So I don't know how I scored that. It was like truly the best find ever. Like I'll never top this dresser and this find. So at this point, there is really not much left to do in this room. I'm pretty much just gonna bring in a few decor pieces. I ended up actually getting my side tables from Target. I completely forgot that that's where I got them. They were so cheap and I think they're actually pretty cool. And fun fact, the day after I got them, I was painting my nails in here and I left the lid off of the nail polish remover. And as the thought went through my head, Kimberly, don't knock that over, the lid is off. I reached for the bottle to put the lid on and knocked it over. <laughs> so I destroyed the top of one of my side tables on um, day one. So I decided to just lean into it and um, I actually used the nail polish remover to completely remove the stain on the tabletops, which I'm sure is, I'm sure it shaved off multiple years of my life in healing that. But um, it's all I could think to do. and. I just really didn't feel like researching it. So I took off the stain with nail polish remover and actually I think it's a much better color now. So, you know, everything always happens for a reason, but all I have left to do is just bring in a few decor pieces, hang a couple things on the wall. So cue the decorating montage. I probably should have moved the cats for this, but I just like, come on, I couldn't. So I figured I could just tell you about the things I got for the room while I'm decorating. So this is obviously the lamp that I painted earlier. And like I said before, I thrifted this for $10. This is another thrift find, and one of the best and worst things about me is that I leave tags on everything. So it's the best for moments like this when I wanna show you that I got this for $10, but the worst because everything I have has a price tag on it. I would say that this stick was for free, but it really cost me like two hours of my time driving around looking for sticks at parks. So the pillow covers are from Target, but I actually took out the inserts that came with them because I thrifted Pottery Barn down pillow inserts. And don't freak out, they were brand new and still in the plastic wrapping. And now the cats have to go. This throw blanket was a gift and I've had it forever, but I think it was from Target. So here is our DIY art project, and this canvas was originally from Home Goods. It was a print that cost about $50, and it's now served as two different art projects. I found this hollow 1980s pillar at a local antique store for $30. This vase was another Facebook Marketplace find that I DIY'd and I forgot to film. But basically I painted it white and then tried a new way of distressing by actually using spices. So I used turmeric and cayenne to add some worn texture to it. I got it for $15 and here's what it looked like before. 
While we're on the topic of things I forgot to film, I completely forgot to show this painting that I found on the side of the road. It couldn't be more perfect for this room. So over on this side of the room, we have two mirrors that I got from HomeGoods for $30 each, our beloved Facebook Marketplace dresser, and the two lamps that I DIY'd earlier. These architecture and design books were all from Amazon and they range 10 to $13 per book. This is also another Amazon book find and I really wanted to keep it simple over here, so other than that, all we have is this small little vase that I thrifted for $2, and I put a couple of curly willow branches in it. I really feel like me and this room have been through so much together. Like, since we started this room makeover, I've been through three new neighbors, two bad haircuts, and a global pandemic. And you know what? I still don't feel like it's fully done, but I'm going to stop my perfectionist self right there and show you the final result.